Hello, I am Kishore Kasim Sethi, Product Marketing Director at Cadence for DDR5 IP. Today, I'm going to discuss about application optimized DDR5, why the old approach of one size fits all IP for DDR does not work anymore. Uh, we talk about different application segments, what are the unique requirements that are driven from these applications that have an impact on DDR5, and we'll talk about uh, how the the uh, uh, affect the metrics of the file. Let's start with the enterprise application space. This refers to anything in the data center that relates to the infrastructure of networking, storage, or compute. These systems typically need large amount of capacity. That is realized with large num number of ranks and dedicated support for four bit wide DRAMs. Now, uh, these add a lot of storage capacity, but they come at a cost of phi area to improve, in, implement these features. Now, if you move to mobile, we are referring to anything that cell phones, tablets, battery powered devices like game consoles, and as well as drones. And all of these uh, applications require extensive power management, both active as well as leakage. For example, extended dynamic frequency scaling is very typical in in battery operated systems and uh, DDR systems need to respond with hardware support to reduce the switching time. And another aspect is the power management of the DRAMs as well as the FIs to aggressively get in and out of low power states. Now, implementation of these features again adds gates, power, and area to the FI implementation which some of the application space do, don't need. For example, the enterprise features like large ranks are never utilized in the mobile, while the extended DFS are not of high value for enterprise. Working through this uh, table here, we have the consumer high-end application space. These are devices that are not battery powered but still need a lot of bandwidth, uh, consumer facing devices. So typically they may need LPDDR4 because it provides highest bandwidth. But since they are consumer devices that are still cost sensitive, many of these products need another SKU that supports DDR4 for lower cost applications. So they typically need combination support of both LPDDR4, DDR4. And they borrow some features from enterprise, the ranks and, and the DFS, but the range of number of ranks and the amount of DFS is much lower than enterprise or mobile. So you end up with unique feature set uh, driven requirements for this space as well. And the final space is the consumer compact. These are the guys who just want a working system that has no bells and whistles. They want to be able to uh, support mainstream DRAM speeds and uh, in least amount of power and area as possible. Now, the traditional approach of one size fits all doesn't work because you're paying the overhead of trying to put all these features in one uh, implementation and it complicates the timing closure, it increases the area, it increases the active power, and it makes any efforts to reduce the leakage power very, very difficult. The right approach is to build application-optimized DDR5s that basically only implement the features that are demanded by this application. So you don't pay the penalty for having features that are not required. So when, when you select your next DDR5, look at your application needs, look at the five solutions available that are optimized for those application needs and pick the one that is uh, optimized with the best balance of power, area, and performance for your application. Thanks for watching. Keep watching this space for more.